Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse and in this wonderful and exciting tutorial, we're we'll trying to explore how to use Strawberry to be able to build a, an API, right? A GraphQL API. So there are two main types of API now. We have the REST API, there's also SOP, and the SOAP, SOAP, and then there is GraphQL. So GraphQL allows us to be able to have a single endpoint for your create, read, update, delete. So the normal way is that with REST API, if you have REST, like you have different resources and then in case you want to fetch data from this particular resource, you have to make a, a, a request to this particular endpoint, right? But with GraphQL, you will have only one endpoint to be able to retrieve all the different resources. That is a basic difference between REST API and then GraphQL. So this is an architecture and then this is a query language, right? So the idea is that with GraphQL, you have just a single point, right, to get everything. And this allows to be able to avoid the errors of overfetching and then underfetching. So you, do that, you don't fetch more than you want, you fetch exactly what you need. So let's see how to use Strawberry to be able to build a GraphQL API in Django, right? So Let's start with this. So I'm just going to go back to my workspace, which is here, and we're going to create my directory and I'm going to call it as post project, or we can call it as blog project. Blog project. Yeah, and I'll move into my blog project and then I'm going to create my virtual environment. So virtual VNV, VNV, and then let's activate it. Then activate and let's install the package. So pip install. We'll be installing Django. We'll be installing strawberry graphql jungle graphql jungle right and then we're going to install it so hopefully it's there pivot so that is fully installed on our system pivot now let's start with our project so we are going to just first of all create our jungle project so jungle admin let's start project and let's go just blog project then if I come back if you have it here I'll just move it to my blog project we have my manager.py then I'm going to create this one so manager.py start up let's call this blog up right perfect so let's open it with uh PyCharm right so we we'll open it with PyCharm instead of VS code so perfect so I'm opening it with inside a uh, PyCharm Right, so this is the new PyCharm version and you can see that it's very nice. So let's start with this. So this is here, my project is here, right? So I'll just go back to my settings. Then inside my settings, I'm going to create or add my local app. So this is going to be my local app. So let's go test my local app, which is going to be my blog app, right? Then I also need to add my third party applications, which in this case is going to be my third party apps which in our case we have it as strawberry right so if you can just go with strawberry or you can just go with the actual name right you can go with just strawberry and it's going to work or you can just add a full name of what you installed right perfect so that is all for my settings and then i'll come back again to my urls right and here we have my main app right so there's nothing so let's create something very basic i'm just going to add my local app, which I have, which is going to be slash, or I can just go without it. Then let's include the blog, my blog app.urls, which you are going to create later, right? So I'll come here, let's import include, perfect. And then I'll just go back again to my, not my project, but inside my blog app, because that's what I want to import. I'm going to import or create a new file let's call that particular file my urls.py right and i'll copy this here and then paste it here just to get the basic overview of it so this one goes off and then this also goes off so let's import so from dot right we want to import my views and then we just this is just the basics right i'm doing the basics and i'm start with the graph here Right, perfect. so this is it. So import views and then let's take off this because we want to just normally go to this place and then I'll just check off this and go with my views. 
right dot index right view then we're going to create this one later so let's go that's my index right something very basic and i'll go back again right since we have my views i'll go to my views folder and i'm going to create my first view so let's call this index view then it takes the request and then i'll just pass in my contest so the contest is going to be something like this so the title and then let's go just there uh, api right then return render right which we have imported request then let's create my index but html and then i'll pass in my contest the one i want to send right very basic stuff and let's create inside our same location here i'm going to create a directory called template then inside my template i'll create my index.html file right perfect so we can just go back again right and then we can just create our title yep right title perfect so that is something very basic right you have done this is very basic stuff then we want to run our application right so we have our urls which is coming from here right so in this view we have inside our main project if i go back here you have my app here right so we just automatically come to this place and now let's run it so to run it just go back to this current file right and then i'm going to add it add a python file let's call this run server then i'll allow multiple instance go to the location of my file which is here right this is it what i need is my money.py so i'll select my manage.py and then the parameters i'll run is run server right this is important and apply okay so now i can click on this and then our application is going to run and now you see our app is running here right so our django app is running and as you can see this is running well hope you can see it well let's make it bigger right that is a basic stuff these are basic stuff now let's start and see how to add graphql to our app so as we saw in our image if i go back to the image that we had we have graphql which is going to be the server that our client can contact with and then fetch different information from different resources for graphql there are two main things there is query right so query is equivalent to read right and then there is mutations mutations means change so in case you want to make a change so creation is a format of change it's a form of mutation update delete their own mutations so these are the two main like methods right so query and then mutation so let's start with it right so first we're going to instrument our application or add graphql to it we have added graphql here right and the next thing we need to do is to create our two main files so i just create our two main files which is going to be my types .py file right which is going to be how i'm going to define my data right and then i'm also going to go back again and create my schema the schema is as the name goes schema right so how do i want it to be right so my types and my schema are the most important thing. but we need to be able to connect to our data right so the particular data that we are we have here that particular data we need to be able to find a way of connecting to that and how do we do that in django we use models right so i'll go to my models file and i'm going to create my model so let's go to this class and let's go to my post right and give it as post or post then i'll just go to model dot models right this is models dot model right and then i'm going to create my post so every post has a title which is going to be my models dot character field let's give it mass length of let's say 255 right and then blank is equal to true null is equal to true right and then every time every post has an order it's going to be models dot character field max length let's go with 255 blank is called to true and then null is called to true right and then we have the actual message 
for the boost to models that can go with my test field it, it, it can also be blank true and then no true that is all right we have right so we have this uh, post that we post you have a title an author and a message and then we want to connect this one to our database so i just go to my admin then i'm going to import so from my models i want to import my post right i prefer to call it posts or you can just leave it like that it's still not going to have any issue right and then i will just admin dot site register to be able to register it in my admin session so that i can interact with it perfect so we have it here so we have models post perfect right that is so we have created our model which is going to be our data right and then we need to connect our model to our resource our graph field. so we use the types option right to help us with that nice thing with strawberry that is quite easy all you have to do is just go to import my strawberry right and then with strawberry we can just do whatever you want to do right as listen so strawberry then from typing it's mostly work with typings so type in import list then let's also import our model that we want to interact with models right then let's start with this so i'm just going to quit my post type which is going to have an id you can add an id right and then we also have a title which is going to be a string and we also have the author of the title of the post which is also a string and then we also have the message itself right which is also a string so you can also add more stuff to it because it's supposed to map to this right so title author message so we can have it here so title author message right and how do you make this one a graphql type you just have to decorate it with strawberry dot django dot type then you specify models dot book so you had now passing in or notebook but the actual model here so we're now linking this boost model to our type here right we are defining them well right that is a basic understanding okay so let's reformat everything is working well so we have created our type now how do graphql know in case you want to make queries right so what you do is go to your schema then inside your schema that is where you define how you want it to interact right your queries and your mutation right so let's start with it so i'll just go back again copy the same thing that we had here into my schema because we also be using the same then i also have to import my type so from dot put or from dot types i want to import my book type or my post type that we had let's make this one better from dot models import my post right, so we have our post and then our post type let's first make our query so this is going to be the query that's the first thing and we also have mutation and as i said queries are equivalent to your get or read right and this query and then mutations are equivalent to your create right so create read or create update delete right and then queries are also equivalent to your post so you have post put or patch and then we also have delete right so that is the basic difference between them okay so let's start with the query how do you make a get request right so the simplest way is just go with this option so class query it must be query right the name must be query it is very important at the Vashna. see a vestige <laughs> and then you first of all when you create your query you have to define your resolver right so there is query there is a resolver, but 
Strawberry makes it very easy for you to include both your query that you want to make and then your resolver how to get the data all in one using the field option. So in that case, it's going to be my strawberry right, dot field. That is all right. And then this is going to help you with defining the field you want to query and then how to reach the data right with the resolver. Right. Then let's go to def let's give it a name so post i'll give it plural post then this takes itself then it takes in the title and then this title was a string and also had you can just give it any name so let's say title is go to none right then don't forget to specify how the return data is going to be so i want my return data to be a list of books right of all of post types That is it. Then I'm going to start if my title is not none, right? Then I want to get my post and the single post, which is going to be my post. Mm, let's see what we define it here. It was post singular. So I just go back again to my schema post dot object dot say filter. Let's pass in my title is going to title right so if the person specify or supply a title i want you to bring it right perfect and then else so retain that particular post right and then i can also say retain the entire data right post.object.all so this is the same thing in case you're using uh, Django REST framework you would have done the same code the same thing the only thing you're changing is that you're just adding a decorator called strawberry field and this is going to convert this one to be able to query it via GraphQL right that is it so this is all that we need so def post right the name post can be confusing yet, yeah, but yeah, we can call it as we say, can give it as something else, right? But let's keep it as say blog post like this so that it doesn't confuse us. Okay, so blog post. Perfect. So you're getting post. And then from there, that is all right. So that is all that you need. So you have created our blog post that we want to query, right? So in case I want to now query it, I have to go back again and specify my schema. So that is the next thing you have to do, our schema. So this is going to be my schema, right? You have to define a schema, right? So schema is going to be my strawberry dot schema. Then go to my query, capital S, then my query I'm going to query right, since our data doesn't have anything yet right it doesn't have any data yet we need to also create one to create a data so that's where the mutations come inside so I'll go back again to my mutations so let's see how to do that it's going to be my class mutation the name should be mutation the first one should be mutation then I need to define it right so I have to go back again and then as we did so strawberry right dot field so that is telling that for this resolver right so that's how to define the resolver then i'll specify what i want to do so let's go to def create a post right or let's go to here block post so that we don't confuse ourselves and this one takes the title of string and then authors author of string and then the next one was the message itself of string right and the return type of this was our post type so post type right so this post type can be confusing but we can fix it let's fix it and instead of making it blog post Right, you're going to make this one blog post rather instead of post 
so that it doesn't confuse us in all the things we have been doing. So blog post, blog post type, right? Sorry for this. I'll copy them all. And so I've changed them. I've changed the post to blog post so that, that we, don't, we don't get confused. And let's call this one as my blog, right? So we don't get confused with the method. Okay, perfect. So we are, we are done with that. And now we also need to, yeah. So we have specified it. So how do we create it? So I'm going to call it as my blog. It's called to, how do we create it in normal Django? We just go with the model. Then you pass in our our details. So title, going to be title. You can also use input types here, right? To help you to make your work easy. So author is going to be author. And then message going to be message, right? That is it. And then after that, we are going to save it. So blog dot save, just as we would have done in REST API or any other part of Django. Then we are going to return my blog. Right? That is how to create a post, right? So we just use this is the create method. So the normal way you would have done in Django is what you are doing here. We are returning blog, right? We can also do the same thing for. Update. So let's call this update. So update blog post, and this is going to be the same thing. It's going to take the same thing, but we also need to specify an ID. So the ID is an int, right? So we are specifying the ID that we want to pick. So we pick an ID first, and then we return the entire stuff, right? So let's see. So first, we have to select it first. So we can select it. So we can call it as my blog. It's going to be my blog post dot object dot get. So ID is go to ID. Then once you have gotten it, we now update it as we want, right? So we can just go to blog dot title. It's going to be my title that I specify blog dot author. It's going to be the author I specify and then blog dot message is going to be equal to the message I specify. Then after that, I'm going to save it, right? And I return it. So that is how to update. So we have created, we have updated, right? And now let's go back again. So all that we are doing, this is a mutation. This is a query. But in order to convert this query and this mutation to something that GraphQL can understand, you have to specify it here at the top of it, right? So at the top of it, you have to create another decorator on top of here that says that, okay, this particular that we have is a type, right? So this is very important. And then by specifying this on top of it, we convert this query into something that we can make queries of and this mutation into something that we can make mutations of. So you have to understand that strawberry mostly prefer decorators, right? Which is quite easy and make it easy. Now we have, we have our query. We also need to specify our mutation. Let's go to mutation. Perfect. So that is all, right? So we have created a get and a post and then a put, right? So create and then I'm bet you do the delete later. Let's see if everything is working. Now, how do we work with our server? So I'll go back again to my URLs. Then here I'm going to import the things that I need to help convert this one, not just to save as we are having as an API, but to have an endpoint for my GraphQL. So I'll go back here to not the one, you can put it anywhere, anywhere it's going to work, but I'm putting inside my project right where my main URLs are, then I'm going to import so from strawberry dot Django views. If you have Django dot views, we want to import. So there is a lot. There is async, right? There's async GraphQL. There is base view, but what we need is the GraphQL, right? You can use any of them. It's going to work. Then I'm going to import the schema. So from my blog app dot schema you want to import the schema so this blog app here refers to here right and inside here you have my schema and you have to import it here right and then 
I'll just come down here and specify the path, my single point, right? So graph kill, right? That is the single point. And then I'll pass in my graph kill view. So as view, and I'll pass in the schema. So schema is going to be my schema. So that is where it's connected. So this schema that we defined here, which has our types, it has our model, the data connection to our data, our types, connection to our GraphQL, it has the query and a mutation. Let's format the entire stuff, right? And then we have our create update, right? And this are all connected here, right? So let's save it. And our app is already running. So if I go back here, if I go here, you can see that the app is running. There are a lot of errors, but you it's running perfectly well. And then I'll just go back, let's open it, and then slash GraphQL. So we have GraphQL. And now we have this nice interview, right? which is quite interesting. This is it. Let's explore it. So we have here the show documentation explorer. If I come back here, it's going to show me that we have my query and my mutation. And these are the two root types. Inside here, we also have all the types for my schema. So we have my blog post type which is int, string, and boolean. You have query. If I go to the query, you can see what I can make. I can only have this particular option here. If I go back to my mutations, you can see the mutations that we have. You have my create blog post and update blog post. Since we do not have any data, if I go back and I query this, there is no data, right? So I can't query it. So I have to first of all, go back and then let's go to the mutation and let's create one, right? So that is it. If I Go back to the show graph KL explorer. You can see the explorer option here. And here you can actually specify that you want to make a new query or you want to make a mutation, right? So if I click on this, automatically it gives you the syntax here. And you can see that you, the two mutations that I have, create blog post and update blog post is here already. And by default, graph KL converts by a uh, underscore, right? to it converted to all so it's going to convert this create blog post into create capital blog post right come on case that's why you are seeing it here. if there's a white space it's going to convert it here which is quite useful right? so if i click on this i can see automatically selected right and i can select all of these things to create so let's start with it so if you have my blog post type right that we have here and in case i want to create one i can just do that here so let's start with it you have my author, so I can just give it like uh, Jesse, and then the name of the message. This is so cool. And then we can just go back with the title, right? So the title is first graph kill post, right? Perfect. And you can see that it's giving us this error. Right, so the reason is giving us this error that we need to not just create it, but whilst you are creating, you have to specify what you want to get from it, right? Because it's a query language. So we are creating this. I want to return something when everything is done. So this that we have here, we can even make it better, right? So now we have this is cool. We have my first blog post, which is ending here. And then I can also specify that, okay, I want to get some data back. So what is it I want to get back? I want to get, let's say, the title back, right? It's automatically selecting it, right? And now if I click on it, it has no such table, right? So the reason it's giving us no such table blog post is that after you have finished, you have to migrate your data, right? So go back again to here. Then in the same location that we had to my blog post, right? I'll just go to Python manager pi make migrations and then we can now migrate once i migrate i have some data there and i can now create so now that's created so my first graph query post and now my post is there right i can also add more things to it so let's create another one so this is jcaris so we can just go back again and then let's create so this is wonderful, <laughs> right? So this is another one we have created. So we have created our first post, we have created our second post, right? Now let's, since we have finished with 
yeah this is so wonderful <laughs> let's change this one to great right perfect so you have created our post so that is how it is how does it do it like if i inspect this it's still not good to the network right and i try and create another one so let's change this one from jcaris let's give it a different name as you can see from here let's take off the j right if i click on this let's see the network if i click on it you can see that it's going with just one endpoint graph key right they don't show the different endpoint as in rest only just one endpoint if i click on this you can see that it's going with a post method because it's a create method as you can see and it's going to show the request url the payload that is being sent is a mutation the same thing that was being shown here right so let me make it bigger right the same thing that was being shown you see you have mutation and then you can see the query that is being sent right that is the query that was sent as you can see from here if i preview it you can see that this is the actual data that is returned back which, which is here right so it's just using the same thing this was a response that was sent right because that's what i want so it's using one endpoint using a post method because i'm calling create then it's sending that particular payload in this particular option then it's returning these things there Perfect. so it's very useful just one endpoint to them all now we have seen how to make a mutation let's say i want to also update this particular one so i want to change something so i want to update something like i just go back with this and then go with update right update and then update as you saw update takes an id right and then the id move on but let's first query first so in case i want to make a query right how do i make a query i just go with my query and then this query goes with this option right so here and that is where i put all my stuff there right query and what do i want to query i'm going to specify what i want to query i can give it my query a name it can be my query it can be anything you can leave it without it is still going to work my query and then i want to specify what i want to query so what i want to query is that i want to query on my blog post right perfect and you can see that automatically giving us some information right so the blog post this is it and it takes the string so i can pass in a string of for the title so title let's say the title i want to query is so anything so great graph kill post right and i have to specify i have to specify what i want right so it is very useful to help you avoid overfetching so i want to get the title and i also want to get the order right so very cool and now you see that we have this particular post or the post that has the same title and the order in case i want to get every form of the data right i can also do the same thing so in case i want to get all the data i can just do the same thing i can also take off this and it's giving us this sentence error right it's giving us this sentence error but i can fix it right because according to the django that i specified i said that i if the title is none right if the title is none return everything right so if the title is none if it's empty return all the data right and i can also specify that i don't want only just this i also want the message itself right and then i can click on it and see that we get the message so you can get a lot of stuff by specifying these things right very cool that is the get so this is get and let's inspect it and see but it will be post right for security reasons you can also specify yeah so let's try it again same endpoint and this still post right because of security endpoint yeah but that is something very cool with graphql right very simple okay now we have seen how to make a query we have seen how to create if i go to the show history i see all the ones i did so my mutation the one i created is here right in case i also want to update i can also do the same thing 
if I want to update, I can do the same thing. So here we can also add the ID. So let's add an ID to it. So we have got an ID. So in case I want to update number two, right? I can also do the same thing. Let's go back to my mutation and let's create this one as update. Right, update blog post. I have to pass in the ID, which in this case is going to be, let's say, the ID was number two, right? And I want to change J carries to let's say something. So Peter. Right now it has updated it. I can also get the entire data set. So we have the ID. I also want to get the author, which I change. I also want to get a message, right? But now it has changed from the previous one to Peter, right? Very cool. So you can see that you can actually update it. Let's see how to delete. Because we did not create the delete option, we just go back down here and see how to work with the delete. So it's going to be the same thing. So strawberry. Dot failed. Then def delete blog post. And this one takes self and delete takes an ID. You can also specify, let's say, boolean or something. So int. And this returns boolean, right? And let's see what you want to do. So, how do we delete simply? You just fetch like we did and then you delete right you fetch then you delete then you can now return true right if i've deleted i will return true and it automatically added to it if i save it and i go back here right go back to here right back and then back again to my mutations so we have my create update if i refresh it go back again to my mutations so you have my delete here right my delete blog post and now i can click on it and see what you can do with it i need the int to delete it which is quite cool right so to delete just go with this option so let's go back and then let's delete something so i want to delete so delete blog post I'm passing the id that i want to delete say so the id i want to delete is let's say number the two that we created right that is it so this is how to delete right and then and if i click on this that's deleted right and one thing about graphql is that you can also make multiple queries right so we just created delete i can also go back again and make another query so query so my query two, and then I can also go back and then make a query as we did previously, right? So we call it as let's say blog post, right? Which had the title, which was empty, right? We don't want to put anything there. We want to get everything. And now I want to get the ID. I want to get the title. I want to get the author. And then the yeah these ones. So if I run it, so so you can select the one that you want, right? We have gotten our data back again. Very cool, right? So we have deleted number two, and number two is no more there, right? So that is how to use Strawberry and then Django to create a GraphQL API, which is very simple, very cool, right? You can make multiple queries together, as you have seen here. You can also specify a limit. So let's say I want to add a limit to my data, right? You can also do the same thing here. So we had my blog post that has the entire stuff. I can also create one. So let's say def. So blog post. So by limit, right? And this takes in the limit. is int. And let's say the, the default limit can be, let's say, a new number, right? Or let's go to none. So we don't have any limit yet. And just as we did here, this is also going to return a list. Right. Then see if the limit or we can just go without the limit. Just go with my blog. 
going to be my post dot object dot all then like how we'd have done it to zero right to the limit and then let's return the block right oh, this is blocks not one because it's plural and then we can just decorate it as we had here so this is how to add a limit to it same thing and if i refresh it going back here so this is where we had we have our mutation and stuff if i go back to the query refresh query query so i have block by limit and now i can also specify the limit there so instead of this option here that's we give give us this this is amazing it is not block post it is now so see you can see here it's already showing i can limit it by two so let's limit now let's say two right and we did not have this you only have let's take off this because it's from previous tutorial so now you see i have three right three of them i can limit it to four we have it here and i can also add the message you see we have it here right so you can add more features to it whatever you can do with rest framework you can also do them in graphql most of them right and it's quite easy with django the same thing you would have done the only thing you're doing is that you're just decorating it here so to recap you need types where you define your type right your type that's going to interface with your model you need your schema which is going to have your get which is a query and then your mutations which is your create update delete so thank you for watching this tutorial see you another time and then stay blessed bye